Hallo, Amerika. The Finnish minister in Stockholm, Elias Erko, speaking for the Mutual Broadcasting Company. My American friends, the last time I, then as a minister for foreign affairs, had an opportunity of talking to my American friends, it was immediately after Finland had been attacked and the first bombings of civilians, civilian towns had happened. We were thrown into war because we had not consented to give to a foreign power something to which we had the full right and which had belonged to us during the whole of our history, and that is to say nearly a thousand years. Finland, a small nation, had to defend its own with full right. Why shouldn't it have such a right? Every private citizen in every civilized country has such a right, and in that they are supported by law and law courts. But amongst nations, it seems to mean that only their own strength and arms can give them justice. Being a small nation, Finland has not had at its disposal the same alive force as its opponent. Finland was condemned, everybody thought. It would be destroyed in a few days or in a couple of weeks. Tremendous sympathy was shown to us all over the civilized world. This sympathy was so great that it nearly suffocated us. One could really say that the intended funeral was brilliant. But then the wonder happened. Finland's small army gave proof of strength not only as soldiers, but also as a moral factor in the soldiers' great love of their own country. The insult of their rights gave them strength. One victory after the other fell out their arms. The world suddenly noticed that Finland needed something else than sympathy in its fight against an enemy that was 50 times bigger. Finland had the right to get this help if moral values were of any importance. The Finnish nation had been a nation of peace. It had sacrificed its strength and work to building its own house and obtaining, under difficult conditions, a decent life, higher education and better living conditions. It had believed in the international system of law and rights and in the existing treaties. But Finland had bitterly to regret that these principles did not mean its security and safety, but that belief in them threatened its existence. Finland had to notice that the law of nations is only for those that are strongly armed and have masses of soldiers. With deficient equipment and small material means, Finland started to defend itself. There were even those who looked at our fight with irony and said that Finland gets what it, deserve, what it deserves. But we had also friends who understood our position and saw that Finland had to be helped and not only pitied. We had some friends who had the same ideas of international justice as we had. These friends amongst which Sweden was nearest to us gave us already in the very beginning the first material aid that we need so much and that was of such deciding importance and, that, and they continued their aid in such a degree it was practically possible. But when there is nothing more to be given in material, nothing can be given. The material, financial and humanitarian aid Sweden has given to Finland has been greater than that of any other nation. It is not anybody's fault that this aid was not sufficient and that we demanded more. We wanted urgently help in men to fill the gaps and to obtain reserves. We received some brave volunteers, but only a handful. The international situation in Europe and the war between great powers was such that it did not only place Sweden in a difficult situation, but also prevented us from getting effective help from elsewhere. They thought of their own position. We Finns understand it, but it is human when we are fighting not only for what is dearest to us, 
but also for great human principles that we feel certain bitterness when the deciding help could not be obtained. But I am now speaking to you, my American friends, and you are interested to know what your posi position is. You have always been defenders of democracy, liberty, and justice. And to the development of these ideals, you have always given your support. We knew that we had your sympathy. Finland was also a neutral country which defended the same ideals. But we have seen that there exists a very unclear idea called neutrality. This neutrality forbids a neutral country to give full support to another country which is attacked and defends its neutrality. I must say that in this state of things there is sub something abnormal which should be altered if there is any hope in future to put an end to aggressions and to use of force. Neutrality must be in future something real and moral and not anything passive and colorless. In this case, Finland has heroically defended its integrity, security, and also neutrality against the heaviest odds of the world. To save our existence, and with sorrow in our hearts, and with an unbeaten army, we have been forced to give our consent to yielding that which we have defended with our heart blood. The best of our young people are killed. All our towns have been bombed. Some of them entirely destroyed. Our economic life and balance is disorganized. The pearl of our crown, Karelia, the richest part of the country with its great history and economic values has been given to the opponent. And hundreds of thousands of citizens have lost their homes and land to the enemy. All that on the altar of peace. But we intend to continue to live and we intend to rebuild all that is destroyed. Even when we are living in a smaller country, we are in peace and we are hoping that the future will again one day be brighter to us. When we were in the war, the laws of neutrality forbade our friends to give us all the help needed. Now we are no longer in war. The last time when we asked for American support over 20 years ago was when we did not have bread to eat. The help was given, but we have been repaying our debt conscientiously even when we were fighting. Now we ask you again to give your helping hand to the rebuilding of our towns, villages and houses. We don't want your men, but only, for example, a dollar per man which is not very much, and which would all be returned to you. I have always had a great admiration for American institutions and for your great principles. Now you will be able to see, if you want it, that your little brother Finland, inspired by the same principles, may quickly put his own house in order again. This is a business proposition. I think you will understand it. The question is only, do we get an answer or not? I send my best wishes to your president, who has shown so much greatly appreciated interest in Finland's cause and to the whole of the American nation. May God save you always from the trials and sufferings of war.